Hi, it's me, Rob Rufus again. I tell you, I still have this overwhelming sense of a mandate and assignment from heaven to stir the church up to see the supernatural, to see the miraculous power of God in demonstration, afresh in the earth again at levels that we've never seen before, that even surpass and eclipse the early church. Even Jesus himself was saying, when you see me do miracles, it's not to set a standard that's so high that you'll spend thousands of years trying to reach that standard. But he made it clear, I'm just starting out. I'm, I'm setting an example, but me, I'm not the high bar. He said, you'll do the works that I do and even greater works because I go to the Father. And so it's the miraculous that makes Christianity unique. There's so many amazing things in so many different world religions. But no, no one has got a Jesus. No one has got a miracle worker like Jesus, whose entire purpose of going to the cross and going into the depths of darkness, going down to the prison below and taking captivity captive and rising from the dead with the keys of hell and death <laughs> to live forevermore. But beyond that, to be exalted to the highest place for us to step out. And so it was the miracles that shook Jerusalem. Jesus said, if the miracles I did in Capernaum were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, these cities would have repented. There's a grace-hating spirit. There's a miracle-hating spirit. It's a control spirit. It, it knows that no religion can compete with the people of the kingdom, with the followers of, the G of Jesus who's alive and ruling and reigning and is doing his miracles today through us. And even as I just talk about it, even as I speak to you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit coming on people that take the time to listen to what I'm saying. There's an impartation, an activation. You're being flooded and filled. And the greatest preaching is not to entertain people. The greatest preaching is to make people hungry for more of God. Because when people want more of God in their life, they will get more of God in their life. When deep searches for the depths of God, there's a corresponding fountain in the heart of God. And all his waterfalls and all of his glory can come over you. And the delight of the Lord can fill you. So preaching should make people more hungry for more of God. And preaching should also just state the obvious. There is no gospel without miracles. There was never any idea or thought in Jesus' mind or the first century church that you could have a gospel without signs, wonders, and miracles, and healings. And for that period of time when the church walked in that, the church conquered in 100 years most of the known nations of the earth. When Philip went into Samaria, it wasn't his great preaching, although he did preach Christ with great power, but it was the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the paralyzed walking and demons coming out that filled the city of Samaria with joy. And it's, it's the breaking open. Jesus said himself, don't believe me just because I say who I am. But believe me, because of the miracles I do, Jesus claimed miracles are credentials. Now, some people are so worried about the counterfeit miracles of the devil. Listen, the devil can never compete with the authentic miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no greater way of revealing God's love than to hand someone back to their loved ones raised up from the dead or healed of terminal cancer. Just the love of God must be revealed in miracles and the church will not see the greater works or even the works unless we focus and wait on God for it and teach on it and expect it and learn the ways of God. So I decided I'm not going to surrender. I'm not going to give up. If I prayed for 1,000 people and they all died, I'd still believe it's the will of God to heal all because I will not bring the word of God's promises down to the level of Rob Rufus's experience, but I will trust God to bring our experience up to the level of the word of God's promises. So, um, if you want to get online or go and watch our teaching, uh, our Sunday teaching here on City Church International Hong Kong, I'm speaking about four ingredients of the miraculous and how they work together. And you need to understand the chemistry. And I'm talking about it like it's a kingdom science that the church 
uh, knows that God does miracles sometimes, but the whole church needs to know how he does miracles and how we operate with God. So I'm, I'm just kind of doing a number of, I think, humorous narratives that literally show, and I'm going to call this, God's power is perfected in our weakness. He doesn't need our, str our strength. He's got enough of his own. He wants our weakness and then he'll manifest his power through us. So my life of learning on the miraculous is just a, is a, is a humorous story of me making a fool of myself over and over again. And yet God came through with glory. Even in my early 20s, having been saved at 23 and planting a church at 25, within two years I'd encountered with God through the ministry of Kenneth Hagen in Johannesburg, South Africa. I came back immediately, miracles begin to manifest and break out in our church. It was instant. It was three days under a ministry that could impart and release. And after those three days, 40 years later, I've been flying around the world and seeing amazing, amazing miracles, particularly in some contexts, in some places. But I believe that right now God is putting this uh, assignment up at the highest level, on the high alert for the church to wake up and stop being spectators and watching a few uh, gifted people. This is not the time for gifted people. This is a time for ordinary people. God doesn't confirm a ministry. He confirms a message, the message of grace. He doesn't confirm a person. It says Jesus confirmed his word with signs following. And anyone can get the word filling their heart, the promises of God's word filling their heart, and then speak from an overflow of the word that's working effectively in our heart under an anointing, and God will work with you to confirm his word with signs following. So, you know, when I started seeing miracles at first, then suddenly uh, people started inviting us to come and pray for this one and that one. And I remember one day, the famous day when I was uh, just in my study and uh, praying and the phone rang and this Afrikaans lady said, I hear you do miracles. And I said, no, no, I don't do the miracles. Uh, Jesus works with me to confirm his word with miracles and signs following. She said, oh, okay. Well, she said, my dad has got uh, his whole his lungs are full of cancer and uh, he's going into a coma and the doctors have opened him up and they saw the cancer is so big all over his lungs that he will never is no hope for him at all would you come and I heard myself say yes and she said okay and I put the phone down and I fell under my chair and under my desk and I started crying and I said oh god why did I say yes Lord, you heard what she said. His lungs are full of cancer. I'm only starting out in this healing thing. I've only learnt a little bit from Kenneth Hagin, and we're seeing a move of the power of God. But Lord, cancer in both lungs, flooded, filled. And so I go there. I'm so nervous. I, go, I don't like going into hospitals. <laughs> I go in there, and it's a private ward for two people there. And I walk in, and I tell you what, death, the spirit of death's got a smell. I didn't know that before, but I smelt the spirit of death over Mr. Kempfer. He was almost in a coma. His daughter, big Mafutu lady, as we'd say in Africa, Mafutu means big and broad, <laughs> well endowed. And she was standing there and there was a man uh, in another the other bed. And I walked up to him. I was so nervous. I was so tense. I was so frightened. And uh, see, God doesn't need our strength. He needs our weakness, that we obey him out of our weakness and he will perfect his power. There's nothing more exciting than knowing the love of God moving through your mouth, from your heart, your words, feeling the anointing of God doing the things that show the love of God to people. Healing and miracles is like a dinner gong to hungry pagans and heathens and unbelievers. They so long to see a God of miracles show up today. They're so tired of people telling them that, oh, God killed your little daughter and took her home like a little rose. He plucked her out the garden of your life down here on earth and so he could have her in heaven. This is disgraceful to say this about our father when Jesus made it so clear 
that we are to do his works and even greater works, that the church is meant to come to the measure of the full stature of Christ and no longer be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by men that lie in cunning craftiness and deceitful scheming to keep the church infant and immature and introspective and only thinking about well, how, how do I feel. No, that's making Christians get actually mental problems and depression look outward look upward at the awesome god look at the assignment he called and authorized you and and he's given you divine endorsement and approval and commissioning to represent him in the earth and so i went in there i was nervous and i stood there and the man was nearly dead and he was just hardly conscious and suddenly the power of god came on me i'm talking about like clark kent and becoming suddenly Superman. I was standing there, Rob Rufus, nervous, tense, and frightened. But just by me positioning myself, just to be there in that room <laughs> in my 20s, and suddenly the power of God came on me. It was like God unscrewed the top of my head and poured his faith into my head, into my heart. And he gave me his spirit. And Jesus was present in his glory. And it was like I stood up on my toes and began to roar like a lion and shouted, not in a hysterical, arrogant way, but with my voice full of the glory of God. And I pointed at Mr. Kempfer and I said, Mr. Kempfer, you will live and not die. When I said those words, the power of God hit the room. His big daughter, standing at the bottom of the bed, who would never been in any service where people fall under the power. It was like a baseball bat hit her in the head. She fell over backwards. She grabbed the bottom of the bed just in time. That's all I said. Mr. Kempfer, you will live and not die. I'd already prayed for him and ministered to him, but then the power of God came on me. And I spoke it over him. The man in the other bed lifted his hand and waved at me and said, please, me too, me too. And I tell you, I went across to him, prayed for him, went out through the door, got in my car, drove home, halfway home. The power of that mantle uh, it kind of like lifted off me. And I was just Clark Kent again, just scary little Rob Rufus in my own natural mind. And I, I got terrified. I thought this man's going to die. This Afrikaans family is going to kill me that I've just said you'll live and not die and all my university secular humanistic training before I was a believer you know that spirit that anti-miracle spirit it came and haunted me and suddenly I was terrified and so I went away for three weeks to Cape Town with Glenda and while I was there I was imagining after a few days they're having his funeral and they hate me because I lied I said you'll live and not die anyway to cut a long story short the truth is when I came back from that holiday, I walked in to our church, Victory Face Center, Waring's Bakery, Crompton Street, Pantown. I walked in there for the first time in three weeks, and I suddenly saw Mr. Kempfer's big daughter running across the floor to me with her face like intense. And I thought, that's it. She's going to kill me. She threw her arms around me and she hugged me like I, I was enveloped into deep marshmallow flesh. And she was swinging me around. I literally, my feet came off the ground both. And I was moving through the air in the embrace of this huge Afrikaans marshmallow of which I was engulfed into and was beginning to suffocate. And I thought she was trying to kill me. And then suddenly I heard her say, he's alive. He's alive. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. I started getting hysterical. She calmed down. She put me down and she said to me, half an hour after you left, my dad got up and he peeled an apple and he ate an apple and he, he shook off the coma and he was, he was attentive and he was recovering. And then a day or two later, he went into extremely uh, high fever and that, that the doctors were worried. And so they had a look in uh, and to his lungs and they realized there was no cancer there, there was no sign of cancer the, like a like a, a blast from heaven had literally disintegrated and evaporated and deactivated and demanifested the cancer it was cursed at the very core of its being and it turned into dust and this was the problem the cancer had become dust and this is often what happens now that dust has to be taken by your blood out of your body and sometimes there's high fever caused by the blood taking the dust of destroyed cancer out of the patients and so after uh, a couple of days the fever passed and all the x-rays showed 
absolute 100% no cancer. The man came and he testified in front of our congregation. And years later, when I left South Africa to go to Australia for, to plant churches there and on into Asia, Mr. Kemper was still alive and well and had become a believer in Jesus Christ. He had a, he had a counterfeit conversion. He was religious. He didn't know Jesus. But because of the miraculous presence of God, this man became a believer. And the ramifications of miracle momentum never end. They just go through generations. Stories are told over and over again. But you see, in the middle of that, I had to look like an idiot. And I want to tell you that I am so happy to lose all my dignity. I am so happy to look like the biggest fool and just let my weakness be seen to all. And But go and obey the Father. Don't wait till your life is over and wake up one day and think, oh, we were all called. These signs will follow them that believe. Not these signs will follow apostles. He said, anyone who believes in me, the miracles I've been doing, you will do also, and even greater, because I'm going to the Father. Don't give up, even when you fail. Just get find people that have got results. Listen to them. Get around them. Catch their anointing. Learn their ways. Get onto a City Church International Hong Kong website and uh, Rob Rufus Ministries, if you want. And you look up those City Church International Hong Kong or Rob Rufus Ministries, and you look and follow this series we've been doing on healing and miracles and how to shift your consciousness in your soul so that your soul becomes so renewed and in tune with your spirit that this full voltage of the electrical heavenly voltage can flow through your spirit unhindered by your soul and your soul's arguments against the spirit, but your soul becomes compliant and aligned with your spirit. So the full power of God that is inside your spirit already that can do the works of Jesus and the greater works of Jesus can come through your spirit and flow straight through the wiring of your soul without any hindrance and come out of your mouth, come out of your eyes and come out of your hands, the living power of the Most High God and go for it and keep going for it until you get the miracles and you will get miracle momentum. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, you've caught something today. Work on that and operate on that and step out in that. Bless you.